Lina. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Loretto? I am good. I'm good. Uh, firstly, thank you. Thank you so much for saying yes. And uh, welcome to Braving It, officially. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for the invite. It's, it's really an honor to be here with you today. Such a pleasure. So you know what, you have quite an inspiring story. Um, it's a story that I actually came across on LinkedIn and mm -hmm. another friend of mine shared it with me as well and said, you know what, she would be perfect for breathing it. And then I knew at that point, what I know, I need to double click on the story because you shared uh, a bit of your story, but I thought there was just so much more to be heard. And so, and so here you are, and I actually wanted us to just delve into that a lot more. So let me introduce you um, to those who are watching, listening, who obviously don't know the background that I know. So guys, Alina Pekonyani is currently an environmental health practitioner at the Department of Health. She has a national diploma in BTEC in environmental health, um, having studied that at the Central University of Technology in the Free State. She did major in epidemiology, occupational health and safety, and also food safety as well. She was previously in the employ of the South African Police Service, SAPS, and she, um, I think you were in the position for about 10 years and a bit. Okay, um, <clears throat> Alina, how old were you when you started working at the SAPS? The thing is, when I joined the SAPS, I started off as, as a police reservist, that's, that's volunteering. So it was around 2007 and I was about um, 21 years of age. So I served for a whole three years. Then in 2010, that's when I was permanently employed now. And I was 20, 24. So wow. Okay. I was one years of age when I joined the SAPS officially. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question that I know is burning for most of us. At 21, um, <laughs> I don't know a lot of young women who are like, listen, I'm going to volunteer at, at the police service. So, uh, where did this passion for policing uh, uh, stem from? Where, where, where does it stem from? Honestly speaking, I've, I've, never, I've never thought about being a policewoman, but I've always been that person who, who's not scared of anything. I'm, I'm mm. that person who, who tries. If I think that I can do this, I, I go for it, despite mm. the, yeah, the dangers. So I think for me, it was, it was completely that because I didn't plan on becoming a policewoman. But mm. when somebody said, try this, and I was like, why not? Like, why not? As young as I wow. was, I was like, I'm going to do it and I'm going to excel. And that's exactly what I did. And your family, how did they feel about you tapping into this space? My family, I think that they've always been supportive. They never really um, shielded me from trying things. Um, mm. If I tell them I'm going to do this, they are like, okay, go for it. Do you think you can do it? I'm like, yeah, I, I think I can mm. do it. Mm. And they've always been. So yeah, go for it. If you think you can do it, go for it. If it doesn't work, you look for something else. Yes. So they were very so, so no one was ever worried about your, well, look, everyone worries about our, you know, yeah. your, your safety, but did anyone yeah. ever come to you from, in terms of family, friends who said to you, you know, I think this is such a dangerous position that you are putting yourself in. Don't you want to rethink? Well, was that ever a thing? No, not really. Nobody really came to me and said, mm. girl, just leave what you're doing. But you know, people, they're thinking it as much yeah. as they're not saying loud but mm. you know i think um with me they saw how how passionate i was how brave i was and they were like ah, she's fine let's just let her do her own thing she will mm. be fine pray for her safety and that's all I so you was, so yeah. you were in the field you were out there making arrests all yes, of it I was out bullet vest all and fire <gasps> out. I was that girl. <laughs> Firearm. <laughs> yes. I was there, you know, that superwoman type of thing. And, and and I really loved it. I really loved being being out there, mm. arresting. I really, really enjoyed doing that. Wow. And tell me, what, what was the, the hardest thing you had to do um, in the position that you held? No, I, you know what, I believe that being a police officer, every day it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Every day you do 
push yourself to do certain things. But for me, the hardest thing that I had to do is um, when I need to attend um, a case whereby there's concealment of birth. So that, that for me, every time I, I, I receive a call and they say concealment of birth, I, I have to say a little prayer. I have to say a little mm. prayer. Tiny human beings, you know, those tiny fetuses, mm. it always it always got me. That's mm. the one thing I struggled to um to get used to, if I may put it like that. Mm. Mm. No, I think that would be difficult for for for, for any human, and I think more yeah. so for a woman. Um a woman, yeah, it would be even more difficult. Phew, okay, yeah. no, no, I, I hear you. Tell me something. Um, it was interesting that, you know, seven years into the role, I see you then enrolled to study environmental health. Um, you obviously did that for three years and then resigned 10 years, oh, 10 years into the job. Um, did you always know that come 10 years, I'm going to be in a different field altogether? Or was it an incident that happened in your job at SAPS that forced you to rethink, you know, your future? um what i know is i always knew i always knew that i wanted to study you know because i was never really afforded the opportunity to go to varsity mm -hmm. so me the sap's didn't um kill that you know i always had it in me that one day come rain or shine i will go to varsity i will study <laughs> and i will but the thing is, I didn't really um, know what I wanted to study. And I can't say that there was something that happened that made me rethink or decide that now I want to study. It's always been something that I knew I wanted to do. Mm. And it was five years in the SAPS mm. when, when oh, I was like, okay, okay, it's fine. We are here now. Now I want to study. Mm. You know, mm. my husband also an environmental health practitioner. So oh. I was sitting with him and I was telling him that I think now I'm ready. I'm ready now. And he was like, okay, what do you want to do? I'm like, um, I'm not sure, but what mm. I know, I want something that is similar to what I'm doing now. I don't want to now leave um, being this person who's, who's, who wants to be out there, who wants to be hands on, mm. who wants to for the community wants to protect the community now i have to do something completely different mm -hmm. i wanted something that's almost similar to that and then when he told me he shared he was like you know what i think environmental health it's actually something that you will excel in i'm like mm -hmm. okay be more and then when he started telling telling me um what they do exactly you know protecting the community i was like okay there's, there's, there's a bit of similarities between mm. SAP and mm. mental health. Mm. Because in the years now, I was protecting the, the safety of the people. Yes. And in health now, I am protecting their health. Yes. You know, and, and there's somewhat safety in there. So I was like, okay, this is it. Let's just, let's just go for it. I can, see, I can see how safety would still be at the helm of what you do because that's an extension of who you are. You know, in, yes. intrinsically, you are concerned about servicing the community. And so if you can find a vocation where you continue to do that, you know, wow, congratulations for still identifying something that is an extension of who you are. I think your husband played quite a beautiful role in helping you arrive at that point. And the funny thing is, when I said, yeah, I wanted to do it, mm. can you believe that? Just went to the university and he applied on my behalf. And he came wow. back and said, This is it. I'm like, No, I don't think I'm ready. Now I wanted to change my mind. He's like, No, I don't think I'm ready. He's like, Uh uh. uh, -uh. It was just yesterday when you were like, I want to do this. So you are going to do this. And yeah, I did. Wow. <laughs> and um, uh, tell me something. How, what is the, if you don't mind me asking, what is the gap, the age gap between your husband, you and your husband? It's, What's the age gap? Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 three, how many? Three, three years. years. Now I'm trying to think. It's, three. <laughs> it's really matured. It's such a matured approach from him yeah. to, to push your agenda. I was actually interviewing another woman uh, quite recently whose husband kept pushing her. I mean, this woman did her, uh, uh, her master's and then he's like, okay, what's the next step? What about your PhD? 
she did her PhD and was like, okay, let's look at that post doctorate as well. And then, so I, I'm telling you, so it's so inspiring to come across, you know, young couples who are pushing each other's agenda and, yeah. you know, just rooting for each other and being each other's fans. That's, that's, that's that friendship that is so needed in a marriage, you know, you know, in the article, well, rather in the post that you shared, you indicated that you studied full time and you worked full time and you said don't ask me how i am going <laughs> to ask you how because <laughs> we want to know alina it is not easy it is not easy dedicating yourself to studies dedicating yourself to your profession and family um and so i think it's worthwhile sharing with us you know what was a day like in your life when you were studying and working at the same time from when you would wake up what what would happen Okay, I was I was working shifts, ne? so I worked from six a.m. to six p.m. for two days, and then the next two days I would work six p.m. to six a.m. Right, so when I I, I I I honestly speaking, I skipped a lot of classes because sometimes mm -hmm. I, I I wouldn't be able to attend class, mm -hmm. but days whereby I'm working my shift, I'm working six p.m. Mm -hmm. in the morning with the kids. And then I go to class. Hmm. Sometimes I'll be there from let's say half past eight, nine o'clock until maybe two, three-ish p.m. Then I have to go back home. I have to prepare to go to work. Mind you, I am I am tired. And the next day, that's the funny story. The next day, I don't sleep. I get home, I take a bath, I prepare the kids, I go back to varsity without wow. sleep. So sometimes I, I just wondered, but how did I do it? But I think if 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 you really it, it depends on how hungry you are for something. Mm. You know, if you really, really, really want something, you, you won't make excuses. You know, you would push yourself. And if you push yourself, you'll be actually surprised that, oh, I'm capable of doing this. You know, I think that's 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 one thing that I discovered um, about myself throughout this whole journey. I, I discovered that I can actually push myself further than I actually thought that I can go. So it was it was very difficult. It was very difficult. Sometimes I would go like a whole three days without sleeping, and I, I would be fine. I was I would still feel fine. I think it was God, man. It can yeah. actually help. Is I would I would I would be a walking zombie that is so energetic. And when I tell somebody that. You know, I last slept three days ago, and people will be like, I know, that's not possible. I'm like, I'm telling you, it is possible because I knew that I wanted this and I didn't want to fail myself. I didn't want to fail my family, you know. So I pushed through, but it was, hmm. it was hard. If somebody is out there, it's thinking about it, they must just know that it's going to, to be very, very frustrating. Yes. And I think that you really need you need um a support system you need people that that are going to support you and I, I, i'm really um blessed to have a partner that that really understood my position and and gave space you know and said you know what for these three years mm -hmm. all you need to work and study that's all don't worry about the household i will run this household just focus on mm -hmm. studying and Thing and doing your job and excelling in that as well so yeah mm. i think the first thing to do it's find support if you have someone even if it's just one person you know if you know you have that one person that you can call and say you it's hard and you know that they will tell you what you need to hear then you can do it mm. yo i i i am i am full on inspired i i i prayed for an inspiring conversation between you and I, and I'm getting exactly that which I called for. Um, you know, this is a, a question that I, initially when I was preparing, I didn't think about, but now that you are speaking, it's coming to me heavily. And it speaks to the role that people around us play um, yeah. as support structures, as people who we can tap into. But I want to speak more to the partners that we choose to spend the rest of our lives with. Um, it's it's so important because I think from a woman's perspective, you know, we 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 often want someone who is established, 
you know, we want someone who's got something going for themselves. And that's good. That's healthy to want someone who's driven. Um, but the question that we also should be asking in the pursuit of that partner is, is, is how, you know, how um, determined are they to see me thrive and flourish? You know, what are the telltale signs that show me that this person has such a vested interest in my progress in life? What type of questions are they asking me that tell me that this person wants nothing for me but to succeed in life and is prepared to push me and is prepared to stand in the gap where I am going to be absent for a particular point in time? Tell me your your studies, um, were they, how did you finance them? Did you finance them yourself or did you get a bursary or a loan? Um, okay. The first year was paid for by the university because my husband was working for the university at that time. But he later resigned because he felt like um, he didn't want people thinking that he's pulling favors for me, okay. he's doing that. So he, he took a decision to say, you know what, this is your time. I don't want uh, people putting unnecessary pressure on you or people starting to gossip about things that don't even exist. Yes. So he said, for a job and he said I am leaving this job I want you to be here and to push yourself and show them that you can actually do it you don't need my help you are more than capable of doing this so he resigned that year mm -hmm. so the second year and and the third year we paid from our own pockets yes yes and then after my diploma I actually did my BTEC degree but luckily one of my lecturers assisted me and I got funding so mm -hmm. I got funding the second and the third I paid for myself. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Are you happier now in this uh, career that you're now pursuing? I can't say I am happier. I'm still happy. Mm -hmm. I'm still happy because I am, I am more or less doing the same things that I yeah. did. Yeah. You know? I have new problems. I'm advising. I am... I am protecting the people. So mm. they are happier than I was before. For me, it still feels like I'm same just thing. What I, for me, it, it still feels the same way, honestly mm. speaking. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And what is your advice for young women who want to enter the, the police force, the, the police service? Um, I think that one thing they need to know is that it, it's not going to be easy. Um, that profession, that occupation, um, it's, it's really challenging. And at times it can be psychologically frustrating. Mm. But if you know that this is something that you want to do, you, want, you don't let anybody or, or, or fear of the unknown stay in the way of what you feel like this is for me. The mm. only thing that you do is tell yourself that I know I am capable. Believe in yourself, allow yourself to learn and um, always have um, an open room for improvement mm. because in this every day you learn something new. So be open to improving yourself every day. Wow. Wow, man. So now that you are in environmental health, um, yes. Look, I can definitely, I, I think I've got a very good idea of what you were braving as a policewoman. <laughs> I think we all <laughs> have a very good idea. But now that you are in environmental health, call it, I'm going to go as far as saying it's, it's office type work. It's, it's, it's not, look, there, there's some field work, absolutely. But there's days when you are in the office, you know. Um, what are you currently braving as a, an environmental health practitioner? You know, I am I am working in a hospital, mm. and with this time of the pandemic, showing up at work every day for me is just being brave. You know, because I come here every day, I have to go out, I have to go to the wards, and even though I am, I am, um, how can I put this? I have fear that. Mm with this deadly disease and I might even take it home to my kids you know it can really be frustrating mm -hmm. but I don't that stand in the way of executing my duties to the best of my abilities mm -hmm. as fear as I sometimes get 
but I always push myself. And I think that for me, it's, it's a definition of bravery. Wow. And how long have you been stationed at the hospital? Um, okay, the thing is, when I finished my, my community service, mm-hmm. I stayed at home for about two months mm-hmm. and then I got, so it's been three months. Yeah, it's been three months now. Mm. Sure. Wow. Um, you look, you look radiant. You look like you are serving, you know, because this is the ultimate goal, right? Is to, is to find an area in your life where, in fact, the ultimate goal, according to me, is um, being able to recognize who you are and then give it away to the world give it away to the world in the form of service. Um, and I think you have done exactly, exactly that. You see, I knew that, no, that post was not enough <laughs> to draw insights from. It was fascinating. Um, I'm sure you got a lot of inboxes from that because, it, ne? The, the responses that I received really, for me, when I posted that, I, yeah. I was to inspire just one person. I was mm. like, you know what? I've been thinking about it. I was like, no, man, there's, maybe there's that one person that needs to hear this. And I got the shock of my life. I, I, I was emotional for the whole week oh, because of wow. the love that I received from people out there. So wow. yeah, they were, they were saying, I, I wanted to give up, but, but as soon as I saw this post, I told myself that, no, I am going to do this. So for me, it was... It was big. It was really, really big. I thought it would be. Wow. Yo, look, um, I want to ask, I want to ask, there's a, there's a saying that goes, a, a mind that has been stretched by new experiences can never go back to its original form. Now that you have stretched yourself beyond, um, what is the next thing? Because you're operating in a different form right now. What would be the next thing to pursue? I know you've just started and it feels like a big question because you've just started, you are just warming up to, you know, this 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 new job that you have. But have you, do, do you think about, you know, the future, the near future? I always, uh, for me, this is, this is just the beginning of greater things. Mm. This is just, um, the foundation because this is my first job as an environmental health practitioner so mm-hmm. this is just foundation for me i have i have bigger plans my plans even scare me sometimes but Ooh. i feel like I you that it means that they are big enough you know i still see myself um, being a doctor one day who knows it's possible wow. absolutely I want to be out there. I want to, I want to be known. I want to be that person who who inspires. I, I, this is just the beginning. Just remember the name. Hey, Alina. (laughs) (laughs) How can we forget? (laughs) Um, I didn't even ask, how how old are you this year? If you don't mind me asking. I am telling that you December. Turning 35 December. So still fairly, 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 fairly I young. A lot of time for me. I'm fairly young. <laughs> yes. No, there's a lot of time. There's a lot of time. Look, congratulations on all that you have achieved. Um, your story was inspiring on paper as much it is as, as it is now speaking to you. So thank you for being such a true inspiration. And we can only inspire through our actions. Um, you know, we may not necessarily be our resume, but we are our body of work. And so if your resume is not speaking volumes, it's the things that you can do with your bare hands that can do the job for you you know, can speak and advocate on your behalf. So thank you for being so exemplary in your in your pursuits. I don't want to take up too much more time, uh, but thank you for braving it with us this morning, Alina. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Have a good one yourself. And thanks again for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Stay well, hey? Bye. All right, bye.